Hey there, Dependent Inspiration up here. So if you bought a Team Peak Guardian node, the team just made an announcement a few minutes ago that it's now possible to set up the Guardian node. But what I'm going to do today is to take you through a process on how you can set up the Guardian node on the VPS server. Now to begin with, I'm going to take you through the basic things that we're going to need. For the VPS server, these are the minimum requirements that you're going to need to run the TMP node or the TMP Guardian Hero node. So you're going to need a Linux 64-bit operating system. You're going to need 8 CPU cores. You're going to need 12 gigabyte of RAM. And then you're also going to need 1 terabyte of free space with this and then a static IP address and 24 7 online activity. I'm going to show you what my recommendation would be in terms of a VPS provider. Now the nodes can be set up yourself on a VPS on your personal computer or also you could also delegate your node to a NAS provider like Nodeorbit. So Nodeorbit is also currently live with a Team Guardian node where you'd pay about $25 a month and they will take care of all the technical stuff for you. But what I'm going to be taking you to today is how to set up the node on a VPS server. Now the team were very very nice. They really prepared the whole process which makes it very very easy for you to be able to set up your node the first thing that you're going to need is to register your guardian node or to register your node with an nft put in the ip address of your vps server and after that you get a unique id that we can use to set up the node on the vps server now to begin with like i said we're going to need a vps server and my recommendation for a vps provider would be contable so i do have a referral link if you sign up with contable it doesn't cost you anything extra it just gives me some kickback to be able to support my channel and to come up with very good tutorials like this for you so to look at the requirements again we need the linux 64 bit operating system we need an 8 cpu core processor 12 gigabyte of ram and one terabyte of disk space pin it an ssd one mv me and also a static ip address we're going to get anyway so when you look at the types of contable vps's that are available the one that would fit the specification is the cloud vps3 so here you're going to get eight cpu cores which perfectly fits what we need you're going to get 24 gigabyte of ram we need 12 gigabyte of ram but here we're going to even have an excess and also for the disk space you can either have 300 gigabyte NVMe or you can have the 1.2 terabyte SSD and that's will be my recommendation because we need a minimum of one terabyte SSD space. So what you're going to do is you're going to click on the referral link that I'll have in the description section. Once again, I'll be extremely happy if you sign up using my referral link. So when you click on my referral link, it's basically going to bring you to the setup page. Now, if you are doing this today, if you are doing this in the next days, you've had a pretty good jackpot because Contable is currently having a sale. Typically, when you set up a VPS server, you're going to be have to pay this one time annoying fee. But if you set this up today or in the next few days, you wouldn't have to pay for the setup fee. So what you're going to do here is to choose the duration that you want to run your node. The longer that you run your VPS server, the cheaper the prices will be. So for instance, you see that if you go for the 12 years option, sorry, the 12 months option, you're going to save $14. Six months, you're going to save $7 and stuff like that. So for instance, in my case, I went with the 12 months version because I'm going to run the node for a long time anyway. Now, in terms of the region, just leave this as a real opinion. You, know, you do not need specifically these other regions. And if you choose any of these regions, you're also going to pay extra for the VPS server, which we do not need. Now here, this is where it's also very, very important. Make sure that you choose the 1.2 terabyte ssd this is going to be free you can go with the 300 gigabyte but it's not going to be meet the minimum requirements that we need we need a minimum of 1.2 terabytes disk space so here just go with the default which is 1.2 terabyte here sorry the minimum that we need is one terabyte so if we go with a 1.2 terabyte this would be way more than sufficient to do what we want to do now for the image here according to the specifications or according to the guy that he mentioned i think they said they tested ubuntu 24.04 or so but contable currently doesn't support this version of the ubuntu to a system yet so here just go with the 22.04 and then here very very important when you scroll down here you're going to put in the password that you want to use to connect to the vps server so make sure that this is a password that you're going to remember because if you do lose these passwords you would have to reset your server to be able to get access to it so just click in here and put in whatever password that you want to use you can also also use the auto generate password prompt and this would basically generate password for you now for object storage you do not need to choose anything here networking leave everything as a default and just click on next and then here if you're already a customer just sign in if you're not a customer just sign up make the payment and i'll take you through the next steps so after they make the payments you're going to receive a payment confirmation or an order confirmation and after a few minutes or hours you're going to receive a second email from contable which would contain the credentials which you're going to use to log in into your vps server so the email is going to look like this mine is in german but layouts are going to be the same in respect of which country that you have the most important things that we need are the credentials that we're going to use to log in into the vps server 
the first one that you're going to need is the IP address. And then the second thing that we're going to need is the, the username of your VPS account. So the username with Contabo is all the time roots and the password is going to be the password that you put in when you were creating the VPS server. So like again, what we're going to need here is the IP address. We're also going to need this IP address to register our NFT on the team p page and then secondly we're going to need the username of the vps account okay so now i guess you have bought the vps server you have received the ip address and the login credentials of your vps server the next thing that we're going to do is to come to the team p node registration and management page i'm also going to put a link to this in the description section so when you click on this it's going to directly bring you here and like i said here the requirement is that you have a TMP Guardian NFT. To begin with the registration, I'm just going to minimize this by clicking here to hide everything. And then what we're going to do is to connect to our Kepler wallet that contains our NFT. So just click on connect Kepler wallet. And then here, I'm going to approve this. And then you see that the console or the page automatically detects that I do have an NFT. So I'm just going to choose this NFT here. And then here, very important, if you have several Guardian NFTs, you're going to need one VPS server per NFT. So in my case, I have only one nft that's why it's a bit easy in my case and then here if you intend delegating your node or your nft to a nas provider like node of it you're basically going to check this box here but i'm not going to do this so i'm going to do this manually because i'm going to set up the node on my personal vps server now you're going to click in this field here and you're going to put in the ip address of your vps server like i said the ip address is what you are going to provide to you when you were setting up or where after you purchased the vps from contabo so after you have done that just click on register guardian node and then here as well very important make sure that you double check everything that you have put in there the wallet address the ip address of your vps server if everything is fine just click on ok and then what you see is that you have a confirmation and a guid has been generated for you but what is very very important is i come here and copy this guid and i'm going to click ok now if you do not copy it you can also copy the guid from this section here and then currently you see that my nft is not active so i'm just going to open notepad or a text editor and i'm going to make sure i paste in the guid there okay now that's done so what we're going to do next is to connect to our vps server and start with the installation or the setup of the node now there are several applications that you can use to connect a vps server my preferred option is to use a free application that is called putty so you can download this application just click on download putty and then here depending on the operating system that you have so this is for windows just choose the processor type that you have and download the application by the way if you're using a mac operating system mac also has an inbuilt application that is called terminal that you can also use to connect to the vps server if you do not want to download putty i'm also going to show you an inbuilt windows application that you can also use to connect to the vps server so here i have downloaded this already and i'm going to show you how we're going to connect to the console so if you open the putty application this is how it's going to look so what you have to do is to just put in in this section here the ip address of your vps server so i'm going to put in my ip address here and then you can leave the port at the same what i sometimes do is i save the session so that it's going to be easy for me to really connect to the vps server anytime i want to do so if you want to do so you can just type for instance like i did simply here and then just click on save now after you have done this you do not need to do the save option like i said i just do it so that it's always easy for me to be able to connect to the vps server as you can see i have several of these vps running and it just makes it easy for me to be able to manage my service and then when you are done if you put this in here just click on open now putty is going to warn you that this could be a potential security bridge so if you are pretty sure that you are connecting to the right vps just click on accept and then the next thing that you're going to do is to log in with the credentials of your vps server so the username is always going to be roots if you are purchasing from contabo just put in roots and then press enter and then the next thing that we're going to do is to put in the password of the vps server this is the password that you selected when you were setting up the vps server if you are typing in the password section in putty you do not see what you are typing but this is already there so what i always say is that you can type the password somewhere in a text editor just copy the password come into putty right click so when you right click it basically pastes everything that you have in the clipboard you do not see this but this has been pasted into the clipboard and then just press enter and then you see that i'm currently connected to my contable vps now i'm going to show you another way that you can do this if you do not want to use the putty application just click on the start button and then type powershell so windows has an inbuilt application that is called windows powershell and then here if you want to connect to the vps server just use the command ssh space roots so root is the username of your vps server and then just type at like the email address at symbol and then here 
put in the IP address of your VPS server and then just press enter. So if you're connecting this for the first time, the Windows PowerShell is going to ask you if you want to add this firm print. So here, just type in yes and then press OK. And then what we're going to do now is to put in the password of the VPS server. So like we did for Putty, when you're typing in the password, you're not going to see the password, but this is already there. I always just type the password somewhere, copy into the clipboard, come into the console, right click and just paste in whatever that I have in the clipboard and just press enter. And then you can see that the two screens looks exactly the same. Whether I'm using Windows PowerShell or I'm using the Putty application, I can still access the server. I personally like to work with Putty because I just find it more handy to work with. If you are using a Mac operating system, there is also an inbuilt application in Mac that is called Terminal. So just click on search. It's not an application that you have to download. Most of the Mac operating systems come with this application already installed. Just search for the application that is called Terminal. And to connect to the VPS, you're gonna use the same command that I also used here. Just that instead of using Windows PowerShell, you're gonna be using the terminal application. So I'm gonna close this here because I'm gonna continue the process using the Putty application. And like I said, the TMP team made a very nice guide for us that we're gonna to use to install the application. Now the application is gonna be running in a Docker container. So basically what we're gonna do is to just follow the process like outlined here. So what we're gonna do first is to update the repositories or the packages that we have. I'm just gonna copy this command, come into the console, right click and this would paste whatever that you have in the clipboard and then just press enter. And what this would be do is basically update the packages that are currently on your operating system. Now the next thing that we're gonna do is to run this command here. Like highlighted here, this would basically let apps use some packages over the HTTPS. So I'm just gonna copy this command here. I'm gonna come into the console, I'm gonna right click and then I'm just gonna press enter. And then it's gonna tell me that this is gonna take an additional 60 megabyte of this space this is fine you can press y or n so to do yes just press y and then press enter okay now in the next stage what we're going to do is we're going to run this command here i'm going to copy this i'm going to come into the console i'm going to right click and i'm just going to press enter now this has also been done the next thing i'm going to do is to run this third command or this fourth command here copy come here paste this in and then just press enter. This has also been done. Now the next thing that we're gonna do is to update the packages again. I'm gonna copy this, come into the console, paste this in, and then press enter. Okay, now this has been done. We're gonna scroll down here, and then we're gonna copy this command here. I'm gonna come into the console. I'm gonna paste this in there. I'm gonna press enter. Now this is also done. So like you can see here, they give us an example of what the output should look like. So in my case, it looks pretty similar. Install this none, install this none here. Then down here, I have basically Docker download and stuff like that. So it means that we are on a good path. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to install Java JRE. I'm going to copy this command here. I'm going to come here, paste the command, and then just press enter. Now here, I'm going to confirm this as just pricing why. This is going to take 373 megabyte of additional disk space. And I think that's why the team were very cautious that you need a minimum of one terabyte. I'm just going to press Y and I'm going to press enter. Okay, now this is finish installing and then now we're going to install the docker like i said the application is going to run in a docker container let's copy this command here come back into the console console paste in the command and then just press enter and then here this is also going to take 458 gigabytes sorry megabyte of additional space just going to press y and i'm going to press enter so now this is installed the next thing that we're going to do is to check if this is running i'm going to copy this command here i'm going to come into the console right click and then press enter and then this looks pretty similar to what we have here, which means that we did a good job. So here I'm just going to press enter to end and go back to the command prompt. Now this looks pretty similar to what we have here, which means that we did a very, very good job. Now what we're going to do now is to prepare the Docker or what is written here, the Guardian Docker environment. Now to do so, just press Q on the keyboard and then this will bring you back to the command prompt. And then here what we're going to do, I really like the guide. I really like the guide here, by the way. It's very easy. I do not understand all the commands that I'm using, but they made it very easy for us to be able to do this. Now, what this command basically means is that we're going to create a folder where all the files from the Guardian node are going to be stored. So what we're going to do first is to change into the the home directory. And then in that directory, we're going to make a folder. So this command means make directory and the folder is going to be called Guardian storage. And then once that folder is created, we're going to change into that Guardian storage folder. And in that Guardian storage folder, we're going to make another folder that is called data. Now they combine everything here. Just copy this command here, come into the console, paste in the command and then press enter. Now, so you see that I got an error that too many arguments. I'm going to make, I'm going to condense the commands into one line to make it a bit easy for the console to understand. 
Now I'm gonna paste this command here for you to see how this looks. This is the command that we're gonna use. What this command is doing is it's basically linking all the other, other commands that we have together to make it very easier for the console to understand. So I'm gonna copy that command. I'm gonna come back into the console. I'm gonna paste in the command and I'm gonna press enter. And then now you see that we have changed. We have gone into our home directory. We have created a folder that is called guardian storage. And then in that same guardian storage, we have created a folder that is called data. So now you see here that the status has changed to guardian storage which means that we are inside the folder that we created that is called guardian storage and then another step i'm going to plead for your attention so this is going to be the most complicated command that we have to run so what we're going to do first is to copy this command here i'm just going to copy this and i'm going to paste this command in notepad now there are a few parameters that we have to change here the external dp port the guardian port the path to the persistent storage and then the ip address of our server and of course the GUID that we generated from the TMP page. Now here for the external port, like they say here, it can be anything, the default value is 8983. So just highlight this section here and put in 8983. And then the same would also apply to this section here. I'm gonna put in 89. And then for the guardian port, like they said, the default is 4005. And then for the guardian port, I'm also going to put in 4005. Now, and then the path to the persistent storage, this is the folder that we created here. So it should be a path to the data folder that we have here. I have already created that path for you. I'm also going to put this in the description section so that will be a bit easy to paste this. Just copy the section here and then paste in that path here. So we want the files to be stored in a folder called home. This is what we change to. In that home, there is a folder called Guardian Storage, and in that Guardian Storage, there's another folder called Data. And that is where we want the data to be stored. Now, the next thing we're going to change here is again the external Guardian ports, and then here the default, like we did up here, is 8983. And then the Guardian ports here, we're going to replace this also with the Guardian ports, the same thing that we used up here. 4005 and then here we're going to put in the ip address of our vps server so just highlight this section maybe i just make it a bit wider because i have to play out the ip address so that it becomes a bit easier for me i'm going to paste in the ip address of my server and then here i'm going to put in my guid so i copied this as well just highlight this section here and paste in the guid so basically the command is done so please do it very very carefully that you do not remove any spaces because anything like that could basically invalidate the command now we're going to copy this command here we're going to come back into the console that was a very long command by the way and we're going to paste that command here just right click in the console this is pasted I hope everything is fine. Let's check this again. External port 8983, 8983. I'm going to take a break to go through this so you don't have to sit through this. Okay, so this all looks fine. What I'm going to do now is to press enter. So it appears I made a mistake when I was copying the file. Um, I had one more space than it should be. So I corrected this. I'm just going to paste in the command again. Then I'm going to press enter. So, I mean, that's Linux. If you put in one space between, I think I had a space between, I think it was this part here, between um, the last number here and the hyphen. And that's why probably it wasn't working. I'm going to try this again with the corrected syntax and I'm going to press enter. Okay, so it looks like something is starting. So the file has been downloaded, which is pretty good. And what we're going to do next is to make sure that the container auto restarts. Now to do so, we're going to have to find first what the name of the Docker that is running the TP application is. So I'm going to copy this command here. I already tested this paste in the command and then press enter and then you can see that the name of my docker that is running the TMP node is called charming hybrid or whatever it is now i'm going to copy this just when you highlight in putty it copies whatever that you highlight after you leave the mouse now i'm going to open notepad and i'm going to paste in the name of the docker now the command that we're going to need to do the auto restart i got this from the one of the mods from the TMP discord server i mean huge thumbs up and shout outs to them i'm going to paste in this command here i'm going to copy the command now this command here i'm also going to provide this in the description section by the way so i've copied this command i'm going to come back into the console i'm going to right click and i'm going to press enter so now this has basically enabled the auto restart function and after this what i'm going to do now is to come back to the TMP dashboard i'm going to connect my wallets i'm going to scroll down and i'm going to click on my nft and then hooray you see that my nft or my node is currently active that was quite a wild ride but i hope you were also able to do the same thing now quite a useful command that you can also always use is this command here sudo system control status docker and then when you press enter this would basically give you the status of your docker so currently 
everything is running which looks pretty good so that means that we were successful in setting up the node so now to leave here i'm just going to press q and then basically that's it about setting the team picardia node i know it's a lot of commands and i mean i'm sorry for that but basically if you want to work with linux or running the node on the VPS, these are some of the things that we have to get used to. So if you did have any challenges in setting this up, the Team P guys are quite helpful on their Discord. Just come there, post your questions, and the team there would be extremely happy to help you out. That's for this video. If you liked the video, if this was helpful for you in setting up your node, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel to see more like this. Thanks for watching the video once again, and see you in the next one. Bye.